Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. And tonight I've got uh, something pretty special here to share. So on the screen you can see uh, Stellarium here. And I've got it on October 24th, uh, just a little bit before 11 p.m. Uh, the moon's rising and it's at this point that I was trying to determine what my next target would be. Uh, so a lot of times uh, the moon cycle will dictate what I'm capturing, right? I, obviously I'm going to go for a narrow band target and preferably one that's not too close uh, to the moon. And I'm also trying to diversify my targets a bit and shoot at some stuff that's not very common. Uh, so one object that is really cool that is uh, near the constellation Cassiopeia is this guy right here. Uh, this is a CTB1, also known as Abel 85. Now, this is a supernova remnant. You don't see uh, this one image too often. There are a very small number of truly spectacular images of this object, uh, but it's not a common one. And I knew this is uh, an object that would be considered an advanced target. Uh, but I thought that if I could just park my scope on here long enough uh, that I'd be able to get something out of it. Now uh, I run two scopes. Uh, I have a Celestron Edge HD8 and I also have a Stellar View SV70T. Uh, so the Edge, even with the reducer, it's, it's actually uh, a little bit too close. Let me find the right lens here. There we go. So even with the reducer, I can't quite squeeze it in there. And um, uh, I had other targets for the edge anyway. So I was looking for something for my SV70T. And it frames up really well uh, with this scope, uh, 336 uh, millimeter focal length. Uh, focal ratio is f4.8, I think, and I have my ASI 1600 mono on this. So I thought this would be a good target. And I figured I'd need about 50 hours or so. Now, uh, up until this point, I think the most amount of time I've spent on a single target uh, was probably around 37 hours, pushing 40 hours. Uh, I've spent a little bit more on mosaics, but you know, that's multiple panels. But on a single frame, uh, 50 hours or so would be the most. And uh, those first few subs that rolled in were pretty faint. Uh, I initially planned to just do uh, HOO, and, um, and I started to do some processing mid midway through. Now, I mean, the, the funny thing here is that seeing how dim it is in Stellarium really should have given me a clue as to what I was uh, getting myself into. Uh, so anyway, I'm not going to go through the full processing, uh, but this right here was at 22 hours. And it was at this point that, uh, you know that scene from Jaws, you're going to need a bigger boat? <laughs> well. I knew after seeing this at 22 hours that I was going to need more than 50 hours because this just wasn't going to get it done. I mean, we could see a little bit of detail in there. It's still very noisy. And uh, the number of stars isn't helping things. Yeah, this is unprocessed. This is with uh, unlinked channels and auto stretch. If I link them, eh, not much difference. Uh, so obviously the stars are a problem and uh, on the left side here I have some processing attempts along the way. You can see I took the stars out. I mean with the stars out of there you can see the shape of it but we're still not getting a lot of detail. I used a star exterminator to pull the stars out and 
even though that's a really great tool for taking stars, I mean, this is just a challenging target, a wide field shot with a lot of stars. You can see the blotches where the stars were. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't look bad if I zoom way out, but uh, yeah, I mean, this isn't, uh, this isn't meeting my expectations. Try to do some more work on it. Uh, so I realized, you know, maybe I should get some S2 to help with the noise and the colors. And so that's what you're seeing here is uh, I had at this point, I think I had uh, about two thirds of the time uh, uh, already collected of HA and S2, I mean uh, O3. And so I just went and focused on S2 to try and pull some data out. These are the final stacked images of all the total time. So this S2 here, this is uh, 122 10 minutes, uh, uh, 10 minute subs, and I mean you can you can barely see it. It's in there. Here's the O3. I mean, it's a very weak signal for O3. We got this little bit over here. Uh, this is 127 10-minute subs. And uh, the HA. I mean, you can actually see it okay here. And we got some clouds here. Uh, for HA, I have 300 10-minute subs here. And this is not process, it's just straight auto stretch. So I mean for processing this, I had my work cut out for me. And uh, what I ended up with was this here. So this is my final image and I really had to push this. Um, and I mean it doesn't look too terrible but I mean I'll be honest it did not meet my expectations and if you zoom in any it, the image kind of falls apart I mean you could tell I really pushed it to try and squeeze out as much as I can so uh, this is uh, 94 hours and um, you know when I reached this point I was like you know what I'm not I'm not gonna uh, put any more time in this because to see uh, an appreciable amount of improvement I would have to what like double the exposure uh, and I came to the conclusion that the little 70 millimeter scope uh, combined with uh, the ASI 1600 it just wasn't a good combination for such a challenging faint target like this so Anyway, I kind of finished it, this image that you see here, and I kind of set it aside. I didn't share it out. Um, I was just going to sit on it and try to decide what I want to do, if I want to attempt to reprocess it or not. I wasn't sure. Anyway, um, I was watching some YouTube videos, and uh, I'm sure you guys know Joe's Astro Photo. If, uh, if you don't, please go check him out. Uh, and he had started a series where he's imaging lesser known objects. And so I was watching this video and it was a good one. He did a great job on the editing. And I was thinking, boy, gee, I wonder if he's going to try to take some imaging images of uh, Able 85. So I actually messaged him. <laughs> and the intention was to warn them off to be like hey man <laughs> don't waste your time on this you're gonna need like 200 hours uh, to get anything with it uh, but it turns out he had already been working on it and I think he had like 60 hours or 80 hours or something like that uh, <laughs> and he had uh, uh, had uh, roped Glenn from Astro Bloke uh, to capture data on this one too so he and Glenn were already in the midst of uh, working on this one and uh, I think they both came to the conclusion that this this target was going to take a lot of time so I offered them uh, my data my 94 hours uh, to just pile it on 
to uh, what they had already captured. Now Glenn had been uh, shooting this with a William Optics Xenostar 81. So he's using an 81 millimeter refractor. I'm using the 70 millimeter refractor and pairing those up, uh, they're pretty similar. So that, that shouldn't be an issue. Glenn's using a beast of a scope, a giant Orion 10 inch Newtonian 1200 millimeter focal length at f4.8. So he's getting in nice and close. Uh, but I, I think I think Glenn's biggest challenge is the weather that you guys up in the UK have been having. So he hasn't had as much opportunity to, to pour on the data, but that scope is pulling in so much light uh, that it was uh, doing a really nice job. And uh, when I looked at uh, Glenn's data and Joe's data, I mean, there's definitely some potential there. So really, I didn't do much uh, with this except provide my data. Joe used APP to stack everything together. And then Glenn did some awesome work in Photoshop to uh, blend everything together and get the seamless, uh, a seamless uh, merge between his close-up shot and the wide field area that uh, Glenn and I captured. So they both have videos uh, for their parts in this project. Uh, definitely check them out. I'll have links to both of those videos in my uh, description field. And so what did, uh, what did it look like? Well, here we go. So I mean, this is, uh, this is pretty impressive. So we've got over 200 hours here. I forgot what the exact number is, 222 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, you got a combination of little refractors and a giant newt and you can actually uh, make that object out pretty well. And it's got a nice background in there. So I'm really happy the way uh, this one turned out. And big kudos to uh, Joe and Glenn for processing this. And uh, I'm very glad that they uh, brought me in on this project with my data. I was happy to contribute. So in closing, um, if you're thinking about imaging this target yourself, you know, be warned, you're going to be in for a, uh, for a long ride. I think if you're running a RASA or something like that, this might be a really good target. I mean, you're still going to have to put in a ton of time. 40 hours with a RASA, will that be enough? Maybe. It will certainly be a challenge, and if anyone uh, is thinking about it, I would love to see uh, the results. It might be a bit late in the year now to, to get that much time, uh, so you may have to wait till uh, next season for this one. But anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, if by some miracle you guys, or, or rare chance that you guys are uh, subscribe to me and not Joe or or Glenn please subscribe to them their channels are great fabulous content and uh, they do a lot of these collaborations with other youtubers and it's very good very good stuff uh, and of course if you're not subscribed to me I'd certainly appreciate a subscription I plan to continue to put out content and maybe one of these days I'll get myself in front of the camera maybe at that uh, once I hit that thousand thousand subscriber mark <laughs> so anyway uh good day to everyone clear skies and um see you next time